The Colts had their final tune-up before the Lions get to town, and the team also began cutting down its roster from 90 players. All that and much more on this episode of Locked On Colts. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Colts, your daily Indianapolis Colts podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Does anyone else just crank that theme in their car when they're listening to it, or is it just me? <laughs> I don't know. You and I are jamming out when we're like hidden on the video here to yeah. it. This morning after I dropped my daughter off, I I was listening to this again because I like to listen back like for any mistakes that somehow crept through when I was tiredly editing. <laughs> Man, it's a, it's kind of a bop. It is a bop. It needs to be the whole show. It's like a twenty minute song, and that's and then we just come in afterwards and <laughs> talk about it. I love it. All right, Colts fans, thanks so much for tuning in today and making us your number one listen of the day. This is your daily podcast covering your Indianapolis Colts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Arthur, and I'm joined as always by my partner, Zach Hicks here. Uh, For anyone who's new to the show, you know us from HorseshoeHuddle.com. I'm also a credentialed member of the Colts media. I bring you the scoop from training camp practice every day, except for today. And uh, at the facility uh, throughout the season, I'm also a member of the PFWA. Uh, Zach, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Yeah, you know, I'm the, I'm the film nerd for Horseshoe Huddle. I kind of made my name in the indie market through Stampede Blue at SB Nation. Uh, I've been a big draft nerd my my whole life, uh, you know, especially with, you know, Cover One the last couple of years, USA Today's Draft Wire. Uh, I worked with Locked On years ago in the Washington market. So I'm sure you guys have seen me around just kind of being that snarky film guy on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> not you. You're not snarky at all. No, no, no. I'm very, I'm very approachable. <laughs> no, it, it fits into Colts Twitter quite well. Anyway, with, with the hi, how are you is out of the way. Uh, here's what we've got in store for you on today's show. Uh, we'll go over the Colts first round of roster cuts that they made Tuesday morning, as well as how Tuesday's practice went down. And, uh, you know, the Colts are gearing up for these two joint practices with the Lions. So it's kind of chill today. Uh, and then... You know, there's five practices left, two preseason games. We'll tell you who we think are locks for the roster and who is still kind of in the thick of battle. Uh, So we'll go ahead and start out with the news from this morning. The Colts made four cuts. Uh, They are they are awarded one extra roster spot right now before the season starts. Uh, A practice squad spot, a protected one for Marcel Dabo, who they got uh, the German defensive back through the international player portal. So they don't have to. They don't have to do anything with him. They have that extra spot until uh, until the season begins. Right. Uh, but they cut wide receivers Isaiah Ford and Michael Young Jr., offensive lineman Brandon Kemp, and cornerback Alex Myers. Really no surprises there. Uh, I think Ford is one of their better third team and below receivers, but to me that felt like letting a veteran go and find a new team. Right. It was kind of similar to the Jason Spriggs release right before yeah. this past preseason game. It's, you know, you're a veteran player. You're a veteran player that might be picked up by another team. So we're not going to hold on to you until the end of camp and release you right before the season starts so you don't get a look somewhere else. So it's it's kind of something that teams negotiate with agents where they say, like, look, if we know early on you're not going to make the team, we're going to release you early. That way you have that chance to pick up in another camp and maybe end up on a practice squad or at the bottom of a roster somewhere else. Yeah, I, I think Ford could certainly catch on somewhere. You know, he spent five years in Miami with the Dolphins. I thought he looked okay with the Colts. Him and DJ right. Montgomery looked like, you know, capable veteran backups. Uh, the rest of the guys, no surprises. Like, honestly, if you were asking me, they were probably each at the bottom of their respective position groups. So, yeah. Um, out at training camp today are Andrew Moore uh, from HorseshoeHuddle.com. He was out there. He was filling in for me. Uh, He got his practice notes out there on HorseshoeHuddle.com, so please check those out if you haven't already. Uh, He's also on Twitter at Andrew Moore NFL. Uh, So we're going to kind of steal his notes for today, just let you know what he saw. Uh, So players who are out, and reminder, this is the first practice since their preseason game, so you got guys dealing with the the bumps and bruises. Uh, Cornerbacks Anthony Chesley and Isaiah Rogers are out. Uh, Rogers is going through the concussion protocol. Receiver... Kiki QT's got the groin. Our guy Jojo Doman 
Offensive lineman Dennis Kelly is still out, unfortunately. And then defensive tackle Chris Williams is still out. And he's been out since the first practice. Right. I, I don't know if it's like a high ankle sprain or what, but it's I think it's something on that, that right ankle area. So if it's a right, if it's a high ankle sprain, then I guess this is the proper timeline. But I'm a little surprised he's not back. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they said that your boy Forrest Ryan was back. And yeah. DeMichael Harris, I believe, was back too, right? Yeah, so the, the guys who returned today, DeMichael Harris was finally back. He missed several practices. Forrest Ryan missed, I think, four, four or five. And then Mike Strawn, we talked about him on yesterday's yeah. show. He made his debut. Uh, was a full go as far as as far as everyone could say. Um, seven on sevens, 11 on 11s. Looked decent, caught a few balls. Uh, he said after practice he had like a, a knee scope to fix a uh, torn meniscus. Uh, so that's why he was out so long. It happened during OTAs, but he's back and now kind of makes things interesting in the receiver room. Yeah, I think I saw today from Andrew's notes and from people talking that he did get some run with the first team. And I know you and mm-hmm. I were were speculating on that yesterday on yesterday's show, saying, you know, maybe he does get some run with the first team. But he's, I mean, primarily going to be with Nick Foles, but, you know, he could be a guy who makes some waves in this wide receiver five battle. And it looks like from everything we saw today from camp notes and and people tweeting about it that, you know, Mike Strong looked pretty good out there. Honestly, Nick Foles and Sam Ellinger are the perfect quarterbacks for him to start out with because right. they're really aggressive. <laughs> like, yeah. They're, they're not they're not getting reps to be the starters and being super careful. Meanwhile, everything Matt Ryan does is working out the kinks and getting ready for the regular season. The right. other guys let it rip. And he's the type of receiver you can just let it rip with. So, honestly, it's good for him to be matched up with those guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, and looking at the the notes and stuff, I know you're probably about to jump into it here, but mm-hmm. it looked like, you know, the first day that you're not at practice, it looks like the offense kind of figured some things out, you know? Like, well, they I always seeing big play after big play. You know, I, obviously, I saw the interception uh, that we can talk mm-hmm. about here in a second, but it looked like big play after big play, and the offense was kind of rolling a little bit today. The offense does really well with the pad without the pads on, like yeah. every time. Because <laughs> I think it was last Thursday before the the preseason game against the Bills, they had another lighter practice without pads, and the passing game took off once again. So pads again these next two days against a different team. We'll see how it goes. But we we talked all all about it yesterday. What we want to see. Uh, some of the highlights from Tuesday's practice. You had mentioned the interception. Uh, Kenny Moore flew up and batted a pass out of the air, and Julian Blackman came diving for it. Yet another great example of how these guys might might just excel in this uh, in this defense. We already knew about Kenny Moore, but Julian Blackman is really fitting into it. Will yeah, I bet we'll see a video of that from Colts uh, from the Colts Twitter account or from the Colts yeah. YouTube account or something like that. They usually put the really cool plays and exciting plays out there, so I, I bet we'll see a video of that later today or later yeah. yesterday when you guys are listening to this yeah <laughs> don't worry about when we're talking and you're listening right right yeah uh but so i guess right after that interception matt ryan um he had a nice 35 yard shot down the left sideline to michael Pittman, who had a double move we've seen that a couple times now uh Pittman with the double move ryan on the pump and it actually working out um <laughs> and then ryan also hit naheem hines on a nice wheel route for about a 65-yard touchdown. Uh, Naheem had another big acrobatic catch before that. So it looked like, no surprise, a, a nice day from Michael Pittman and Naheem Hines. Yeah, Naheem Hines, wide receiver two this year, or pass catcher two, Probably. however you want to put it. I mean, him and Michael Pittman Jr., I feel like, are going to be the focal points of the passing offense. And we know we saw a little bit of that in the preseason game where every pass went to Naheem Hines. I know that was kind of the emphasis was just get the ball out quick, don't let Matt Ryan get hit. But, I mean, Matt Ryan was looking for Naeem Hines, which is great to see. Yeah, and Granson had a big day, too, as well. I, man, I, I don't want to overreact or anything, but could he could he become tight end one at some point this season? Well, it's not like Mo Cox is some long-established guy who we know is the, the top answer long-term, like, if I mean, they have very different roles, though. So right, it's, right. it's the Jack Doyle and Eric Ebron type of thing to a lesser right. degree. I'm not – I'm just giving you guys an example of how differently they play off each other. But I don't know. At least the top tight end in the passing game. 
Yeah, no, the absolute dream is it becomes a Jack Doyle, Eric Ebron type of situation where mm -hmm. Wiley Cox is doing everything in the blocking game while also making some catches in the passing game, but Kylan Granson is just excelling as a pass catcher. That's obviously what we want and what we hope. Uh, but yeah, no, Kylan Granson's been stacking a lot of really good days lately. Uh, had a really good preseason game as well. Uh, one of the few guys who didn't have a drop or get muddied by press coverage or anything like that had a really nice run after catch. Uh, so, yeah, Kylan Granson, you know, we've talked about him a lot this offseason, obviously. You know, the Curtis Brooks show sponsored mm -hmm. by uh, Kylan yeah. Granson. But, uh, yeah, no, Granson, I think he has all the ability. If he can just keep those drops to a minimum, he can be a really good asset in the passing game for the Colts this year. Yeah, without question. He's he's definitely been on fire lately. A couple more small points. Another good showing from Dio Dengbo and Ben Banigou. Uh, I guess Dio had a nice little pass breakup. Uh, when he was rushing the quarterback and Ben Banigou had another would be sack. And then, and you can comment on that, that with this, if you want, I'm sure the kicking competition might be over after today. I think we might be able to finally put it to bed for you. Uh, Rodrigo Blankenship was five of five today. And I guess that Jake Verity was two of five <laughs> and had the, the missed uh, point after on Saturday. So that's not great. And with only five practices left, um, I mean, what can Verity show that's going to unseat Blankenship? Yeah, I know you got to segue us out of here in a second, but my only comment on the kick and battle will say, I won't say that Blankenship is a lock right now, but I feel confident saying Verity, it will not make this team. It's not, yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Zach, kicks don't lie and neither do numbers. That's why I'm leaning hard on Elias nowadays. It's almost the start of the NFL season. I love this time of year. And if you're into sports betting or fantasy, you need a competitive edge to win. We try and help you out as much as you can, but who helps us? We highly recommend the Elias Game Plan app. It's the ultimate sports betting and fantasy companion for the NFL, NBA, and MLB. Elias Game Plan is the only sports app from the most trusted name in sports mm -hmm. stats. Elias Sports Bureau, the official statisticians of U.S. pro sports leagues, including the NFL. Their app lets you access team and player stats, head-to-head -head team comparisons, and Elias insights from the Elias Sports Bureau's research team. This app really is your one-stop source for player news and league-validated player stats and team records. Elias has expert game analysis perfect for betting, building your fantasy team, and impressing friends. It's perfect for the preseason. You get your player previews. You get to have it. You get to draft a winning fantasy team, and you get the team previews. Uh, so you know what to expect as the regular season kicks off. I'm considered a fantasy expert myself, but I even need some help getting my ducks in a row sometimes, and Elias is coming clutch for me for sure. Take my advice. Download the Elias Game Plan app today. With new features available all the time, take your game to the next level. The NFL season is right around the corner, so don't wait. Find the Elias Game Plan app. Nope. Find Elias Game Plan in the App Store or Play Store today. All right, Zach. So, offensive side of the ball, we talked about, you know, we, we think there's plenty of guys who are locks. There's some who are kind of tied up in these battles. Who do you think... You know, let, let's start from the top at quarterback. Who are your locks? And if any, as you go through the, the roster breakdown, who are kind of encapsulated in battles? Yeah, you know, so despite what <laughs> what a lot of people on Twitter would say after this one preseason game, you know, you're, you're going to get a lot of buzz saying Sam Ellinger should be the backup or should be the starter. Of Some crazy people are saying that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one preseason game. We, we got to understand some context here. The two locks to make this roster at quarterback. Obviously, Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan's not going anywhere. Yeah. And I'm pretty comfortable saying Nick Foles is a lock. Uh, unless, I mean, unless he comes out and he's just completely dreadful the rest of the time we see him this offseason, even then, I still think he's a lock. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's he's a veteran guy who has experience with Frank Reich. He's not going anywhere. Um, but those are the two locks. And then for me, Sam Ellinger has like, I would say like a 15 to 20% chance to make the roster if they feel like they have an extra roster spot. They will try to squeeze him on there, but I, I think he's a prime practice squad candidate for them. Uh, and then if another team around the league is really interested, they'll probably scoop him up. Yeah, that's the whole thing is do they want to risk losing him? Because he is very much – I could see him being an attractive option for other teams. He's smart. You know, he was a, 
the number two all last year and he's mobile. Like there's not a lot not to like there as as for him being your backup. Yeah, the, the big thing I'll add on that before we jump to our next position though is you know, six round pick player. He did play as the backup last year, but if the Colts were so sold on him, they wouldn't have signed Nick Foles. You right. Know, there's a yeah. reason why you signed Nick Foles. So I, I, I could see the team definitely cutting him and being okay with that. But jumping to the running back position, mm-hmm. I actually have three locks. And I didn't think I would have three at this point in the offseason. I thought it would take a couple of preseason games. Oh, but... I bet Jonathan Taylor is one of them. <laughs> yes. Jonathan Taylor and Naeem Hines are like at the top of any lock list you could have for this roster. Uh, but honestly, Philip Lindsay, I'm going to say, is a lock at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe he's not a big special teamer or a pass catcher, but he's just the perfect third back to have that knows how to run the football. You know, put that in very yeah. simple terms. Uh, he's a very smooth runner. He's perfect for if Taylor or Hines goes down, you have that backup. Uh, but behind him, you know, there could be a battle for RB4. You know, the Colts have rostered four running backs in the past. Deion Jackson has special teams ability. Tyson Williams is a good runner himself. Uh, Devontae Price has shown some things. So those three guys are battling it for a potential RB4 spot if the Colts end up keeping four. Yeah, I at the beginning of camp, I wasn't so sold. I, I really only had Taylor and Hines as the only locks, and I thought right. Deion Jackson would be pretty safe. But Philip Lindsay's been a pleasant surprise. It's It's been kind of a what has happened that last year or two, whatever, where he's just kind of been in limbo. But he's he's been a really good runner for the Colts from what we've seen, even in practice, when you it's hard to judge what's a good run and what's not. Uh, but I think he's pretty safe. And Tyson Williams has shown more as a runner this summer than, than Deion Jackson has. But right. special teams is the ultimate X factor. Like, have they done – have they grabbed enough special teamers elsewhere for it to matter? Or is Deion Jackson that important to those units? Right. I, I would lean three right now, but again, I could see a Deion Jackson squeezing on as the fourth guy for special yeah. teams, but shifting over to wide receiver. And this is the most wide open battle there is because I only see four locks right yeah. now, just four uh, Michael Pittman, Jr. Paris Campbell, Alec Pierce, Ashton Doolin behind that. We have no clue. You know, the wide receiver five and or six, on this team could be on another roster right now. Like we yeah. have no clue what's going to round out that group because there really hasn't been anyone who's taken it. You know, if you asked us a week ago, we'd say Kiki Kuti is wide receiver five. Uh, but after a lackluster preseason game, now he's missing time with injury. Who knows? Uh, Desmond Patman hasn't really taken control of that. And Mike Strawn probably has the, a good chance at it if he keeps playing well, but this is his first practice of the off season. Yeah. So it's hard to say that he is going to take that wide receiver five spot. So yeah, right now I think there's four locks and, and honestly, this could be a prime spot where they, you know, trade for a bottom of the roster guy. They waiver claim someone, they sign a veteran, you know, we've talked about that a lot, or maybe Mike Strawn takes this spot. you know, I think there's a lot of options for wide receiver five and, you know, potentially wide receiver six. Yeah, this is definitely the offensive. It seems like the offensive group that has the most change that we could see at the bottom of it you know when the when waiver wires and stuff are are really cracking at the end of the preseason but yeah patman qt and strong uh patman and qt neither have really grabbed onto it i Mm -hmm. did give qt the nod for a while but with strong back before you and i kind of expected him to be it's open season again i mean Last last summer, the exact way it happened was Patman didn't show a whole lot. It was just kind of downfield sideline catches. And then Strawn was, had that uber summer, and they both made it as five and six. Patman doesn't seem to have grown a whole lot, and then we don't know what to expect from, from Strawn in these last handful of practices and games. So it's yeah. wide open. Totally would not be surprised if someone from the outside comes in and, and becomes wide receiver five or six. Yep. And the next position group is the easiest one tight end. There's already four locks. We are yeah. already done with that position. And I am Absolutely. so comfortable saying there's four locks. I mean, there are yeah. four guys that are making it tight end. It's Miley Cox, Kylan Granson, Drew Ogletree, Jelani Woods. Those mm-hmm. are the four guys. Nobody else has a chance. And unless they make a trade, they're going to keep four this year. Yeah, I will say Michael Jacobson is absolutely a prime practice squad guy. Uh, right. But, you know. There's, there's no reason to think that it's not going to be these four and only these four. 
Right. And then jumping to offensive line, uh, we'll go through this one kind of quick because we're running a little short in this segment here. But um, there are six 100 percent locks. I mean, without a doubt, locks. You're talking about mm. Matt Pryor, Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, Danny Pinter and Braden Smith. And then Bernard Ryman is 100 percent making the team. Will Fries, I'd put it like a 98 percent lock. Like I don't see yeah. him going anywhere. Uh, but after that seven, you know, it, it, I think there is a little bit of clarity but it's not full clarity yet you know we have wesley french is playing really well and he's been running with the second team i think he's got an inside shot to make the roster uh dennis kelly even though he's missed most of camp is a veteran player they brought in to be that backup right tackle so he'll probably make the roster as well so i think they have their nine yeah. but you know there is still some room where you know a guy like josh seltzner who played pretty well in the preseason game could take that spot from wesley french but as of right now i think they have their nine who are likely making the roster uh, it just depends on what the rest of camp happens for those guys. That's the exact nine I would think too. I'd give French the edge over Seltzner, especially since French has done so well at, at center throughout the summer. Jordan Murray, you know, he he didn't look all that great in the games. No. You know, we he's he's had some good times in practice. Um, Alex Molet and Ryan Vandemark don't seem to be threatening that much. So that'd be mm-hmm. my nine as well. Yeah, yeah. So now we're talking about backups, guys. And if you guys really love backups, I know you degenerates want to bet on this upcoming game here with the Colts versus Lions. All backups. So if you believe in Sam Ellinger enough to where he'll get a big enough lead before Jack Cohen blows it, you can bet on the Colts this weekend. The Lions are actually favored by one and a half points on bet online against the Colts. So again, if you're a big Sam Ellinger fan, you think Sam Ellinger is the greatest backup quarterback ever. Go to Bet Online, bet on the Colts. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Even golf. <laughs> bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information. From live in game betting to scores and podcasts, they have you covered. Head to Bet Online today and use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, let's talk some defense and talk some locks on defense because some of the pushback I got when I made my thread on Twitter was about the defensive end group. Uh-huh. I put five locks down. For defensive end, mm-hmm. Yannick Nagakwe, Quiddy Pay, Taekwon Lewis, Dio Dangbo, and I put Ben Banigou as a lock. Uh, yeah. I think he's more of that Will Fries type of lock for me, where it's like I'm 98% sure. You know, yeah. I'm not going to say he's definitely making it, but like we can say with a degree of certainty that he's a lock. Uh, but what do you think? Do you think I should have included Ifede Adenipo in that as well? It's real tough. Yeah. Um, but I just think Banigu would make it over a Denigbo at this point. Right. Both guys have had really good summers. Um, I think both are also trade candidates, yeah. uh, even though the, you know they're they're both free agents. I think. Uh, well, a Denigbo might be on a two year deal, um, but yeah, they're both trade candidates. If they do, if you know, if they don't get cut, but yeah, that's that'd be my five. The, the whole defensive line, I've struggled with this the whole time. I'd keep a hundred of them. Like I would keep most of the bunch of, of the ends and tackles. I don't know. It's, it's easily the toughest group to cut down. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I'll say more about defensive end here is those are my five locks. I, I do think they end up keeping six this year. And I think. Which would be Odenigbo. Yeah. I would say Odenigbo. I'm at like 80% saying mm-hmm. that he's going to make the team. Like I'm pretty, pretty good, but Cam Klein played so well in this past game that I was like, oh, oh, maybe Cam Klein. I don't know. Because Cam Klein, you know, I want to throw some shout out to Cam Klein here because he made a case for himself this past game. As a, as you know, I think he came into the NFL as like a 280 pound defensive tackle. Now he's at like 260 playing defensive end. And he looked, he looked smooth, man. He looked good. So yeah, uh, he made a name for himself in that game. And so that's why it it kind of muddies that a little bit. But I do think Adenic Bow is close to being a lock as well as a six defensive end. Jumping to defensive tackle, I only had two locks because everything yeah. behind those two guys is so muddied right now. Uh, the two locks obviously being DeForest Buckner and Grover Stewart. Mm-hmm. Behind that, man, I, I would say there's a slight edge to Curtis Brooks and Eric Johnson. But, man, it, it's so hard right there because Byron Cowart probably brings you the most yeah. as a run defender behind those guys. Mm-hmm. 
And RJ McIntosh has had some moments in camp. I know he had a really bad preseason game, but he's had some moments in camp. It's tough, man. You have to weigh potential versus production, where Cowart probably gives you the best player right now, where Johnson and Brooks probably give you the most potential. And how much would you be willing to lose those two players if you put them on waivers? So Mm -hmm. that it is a tough. And then Chris Williams, too. Chris Williams, we have no clue with that. So, I mean, defensive tackle right now, I mean, there's two locks, and there's probably an upwards of four to five that they keep. And I, I have no clue how they'll, how they'll do it. Yeah. So if I'm just putting on my, my GM hat and what I, what I think I feel the Colts would do just how they normally operate. Buckner Stewart, obviously don't even have to mention that. I think Curtis Brooks and Eric Johnson both make it. They Mm -hmm. tend, they tend to keep, rookie draft picks as long as they don't just look like butt during the summer. And both of these guys <laughs> yeah. have looked pretty good. I think RJ McIntosh is up next. Um, he's probably got the most run of any of the other depth guys outside those rookies. The rest, of, I mean, Savion Patton, I'm sorry. You're probably the odd man out. Like it's just a numbers game. Not that you've right. been bad, but uh, you're, you're talking I, like he's listening to the show. Yeah, he might. I don't know. We're getting big. <laughs> Sorry, Savion. We want to say nice <laughs> things about you here, but we can't. <laughs> yeah. No. And then Byron, Byron Cowart, there's reason to like him as well, but it's just, uh, if you're choosing between the veterans and it's Macintosh versus Cowart, I think it goes towards Macintosh. Yeah. You know, based purely off the preseason game, I would say Cowart, but again, you've seen more in camp and camp's way more important than these preseason games. And also McIntosh kind of brings a little bit of run defense and pass rush where Cowart's almost purely run defense. So it depends on kind of what you want there. Yeah. uh, That's again, the defensive line that that's, that's the one that makes the roster projections the most difficult. Right. Right. That's where we're going to disagree the most with our projections here on uh, horseshoe huddle the next couple of weeks, but going to linebacker and this might, this got a little pushback as well. I actually had five locks at linebacker instead of four. And I, and my fifth guy is kind of in that Will Fry's Ben Banigou where it's like, I'm mostly sure, but not fully sure. Yeah. But the four guys who are 100% making this roster definitely are Shaq Leonard, who might be on the pup to start the year. We don't know if he'll actually be on the 53 man roster. Uh, so we'll have to check on that. Uh, Bobby Okereke, EJ Speed, Zaire Franklin. Those are your guys who are 100% making the roster. Uh, and then I had Jojo Doman as again like a 98 percent lock i think i think it's pretty safe to say he's going to make the roster uh i almost put sterling sterling weatherford is kind of like a fetty odenic boat to me where I, i'm like yeah. 70 to 80 percent on him right now but forrest ryan is coming back you know you said that he was playing pretty well uh james skalski had some good moments in the game as well so you know there, there are guys who could beat him out but uh i do think weatherford has the edge up on linebacker six if they end up keeping six yeah, so I'm in the same boat with Doman. Like, if I'm making a prediction, I think he is on the roster. But we're at near the end of camp here, and I think Doman – so Doman was out today. Mm-hmm. Weatherford is really starting to heat up in the last week. Ryan is back. Let's just say Doman's out for a few more days, and these other two guys keep – you just – it gets so muddy, like you said. You right. just don't know. Right. But gun to my head, I think Doman makes it. He's looked really good. He's looked good in the past game. And then in, in the game against Buffalo, he was a decent run defender. So he's shown both sides of it. And we assume he's going to be a pretty good special teamer. But with Weatherford, he's got that potential. You know, it's – everyone seems to know that. And he's starting to heat up. So, yeah. He's yeah, coming I, along I, as you would expect or hope. Right. Least. I'm hoping Weatherford steps up and he's joint practice so we can move him up to lock because he's, yeah. you know, he's, he's a good player. Uh, going to corner, I think this is another area where the Colts could end up making a trade, or you could say cornerback five or six is on another team right now. But I have four locks, obviously, Stephon Gilmore, Kenny Moore the uh, second, Brandon Faison, and Isaiah Rogers. Uh, but behind that, it's tough, man. Uh, Marvell Tell did not have a great preseason game. Dallas Flowers flashed, but doesn't look like a rosterable player right now. Tony Brown probably has the inside track for cornerback five, but this is another spot where, you know, cornerback five or cornerback six might not be on the roster right now. Yeah, there are only those four I'd be comfortable saying are locks. Tony Brown, probably fifth because he plays inside and out and is a very experienced special teamer. Right. Marvell Tell has some room to grow, but I think he'd get the edge over Anthony Chesley, who was the other right. guy I would throw in there. Dallas Flowers looks more like a, a – 
practice squad guy, but someone you still want to work on and keep around uh, yep. makes Chris Wilcox the odd man out. But that one is very tough. If they're going to keep six, I think it's Tell and Brown. If they only keep five, I think it's Brown. Yep, I agree. And then going to safety here, uh, obviously there's three locks, Rodney McLeod, Julian Blackman, Nick Cross. Armani Watts, I think, is likely safe, but mm -hmm. Trevor Denbo looked amazing on special teams. Yeah, I don't think he offers much on defense at all. Like, he did not look great in the game on defense, but he had so many tackles on special teams where I'm like, you know, maybe he could be the special teamer that beats out Armani Watts. It all comes down to what Bubba Van Tron says there, but – um, that's why I left that one a little open, but I do think Armani Watts has the edge up there for safety four. I'd agree. And the, his main competition, you know, you, you mentioned Denbo as a special teamer, but Rodney Thomas and Will Redmond. Um, Thomas was initially listed as the second team free safety and Redmond got a lot of snaps throughout mm -hmm. camp too, with the ones and twos. Um, but I think I would feel best about Watts. Right. Um, Thomas and Redmond can both offer some corner assistance as well, but I don't know. Watts just seems like the safer bet if they're going to keep four. Yeah. Oh, and then Marcel Davo is probably going to be on the practice squad. I think yeah, we, he's we he's got a protected practice squad spot, so they don't have to worry about that. Yeah, like right. he's not – He's unless he is awesome all of a sudden, uh, he'll just be on the practice squad this year. They don't have to worry about that. It's a protected spot. Like when they wave him – no one else can can take it. So yeah, and then just to run through special teams real quick, kicker Blake and shot Blake and ship <laughs> Blake and shot Blake and ship is probably at like eighty percent making the roster. I mean, they might grab an outside kicker, but he looks pretty good right now. Uh, Sanchez Rigoberto Sanchez is definitely the punter. Luke Rhodes is definitely the long snapper. So I mean, yeah. that's where you got it. But uh, I mean, according to my count, it was around forty one guys that I had as locks with about twelve spots that are up for grabs. So all those guys that we we're talking about that are battling for bottom spots. There's about 12 that are up for grabs by my count. Mm -hmm. And thanks again for making Locked On Colts your first listen today, everybody. However you play, get the latest NFL fantasy draft tips from Locked On Fantasy Football and Locked On Dynasty. Plus, starting August 22nd, we're bringing you daily top 10 lists for fantasy draft week. Locked On Fantasy Football and Locked On Dynasty. Available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. So, that's it. I, I I know Zach had to bring up kickers on his own for the first time. That's really tough. Uh, we'll be back with you guys tomorrow. The Colts have the Lions coming into town for these two joint practices on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, they'll then have their preseason matchup at Lucas Oil Stadium on Saturday. And make sure you guys are following at NFL on Twitter.com so you can see all the updates from these joint practices. Like we said, these are the most important practices of the year. Uh, so you want to be having uh, Jake on notifications uh, for def definitely for this week, at least. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Zach Hicks, too, for all my preseason breakdowns, Gus Bradley breakdowns and such. Uh, find all of our written work over at HorseshoeHuddle.com. Uh, we're going to have roster projections coming out in the next couple of weeks. So that's where you'll see all this information that we just dumped on you guys really, really show up. Uh, follow us on Twitter, you know, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're almost at 800 subs right now. So halfway through the month of August. Uh, we are getting close to that goal to make, uh, you know, a thousand subs by the end of August to make this my my header on Twitter. So we're yeah. getting there. We are getting there. And then wherever you listen to the podcast, rate, review, subscribe. Uh, we appreciate all the love you guys have been throwing our way lately and, and just keep it up. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get to a thousand. Let's get weird on Zach's Twitter banner, guys. <laughs> and after it. that, go on and check out Locked On Fantasy Football. Uh, find the intellectual fantasy expert, Vinny Iyer, who brings over 20 years of NFL expertise and a unique angle to give you guys the moves that no one else has. Get ready for your fantasy drafts with Locked On Fantasy Football. We'll see you guys tomorrow.